welcome back. Welcome to my channel. I am about to read the cards for you. This reading is for the full moon in Capricorn. It's a blue moon, the buck moon. It's peaking on Sunday, Sunday morning, um, Eastern Standard Time at 6.17 a.m. That's July 21st, sorry. And uh, while that will be the peak of the full moon, um, you'll be able to feel its energies and work with its magic for a few days, the day before, the day after. The moon will still be in its full, bright, shiny strength and power for you know the full day before, day after that you can use these um, practices that I'm going to be talking about. So this is a special time, a special moment um, in the uh, when we're working with moon manifestation. It's it's the blue moon. It's a rare opportunity for us, and this is the full moon. So the position of the sun and the moon and the earth all in alignment. The sun's light bathing the moon and the moon showering those energies upon the whole earth. The sun is like the father, the masculine energy. The moon is the mother, Luna, the female, the feminine energy. And the two coming together in these signs at this time is like Capricorn sun, I mean, I'm sorry, Capricorn moon and Cancer sun. It's like the, the male and female energies are intertwining and combining to produce something, something amazing for us. And of course, our own thoughts and our own energies affect our own manifestations in many ways. And so it's really important for us as a collective or as many people as possible to stay especially positive during this time so that whatever we produce is going to be more beautiful, more calming, more abundant for everyone. And so please keep in mind at all times, of course, to keep our energies and our positivity as high our vibes as high as we can but this perhaps is a very significant time in a way that it gives us more power those energies from the Sun and the moon combining showering on the earth is a is a vibration and a frequency for us to all you know it, whatever we're dealing with whatever we're feeling at this time is going to be amplified and a blue moon period is about two and a half year period so that's a long time for whatever we're working on now concentrating on now to manifest okay so the moon is like the mother and the full moon is like the middle of our journey through life she's reaching the highest potential and creating something that will leave our mark on this world, creating our legacy. The mother can represent having children, of course, but it could also be, and it may not be having physical children, but also giving birth to an idea, creating art, starting a business, or just creating a life that one enjoys. This is a chance, every full moon period, Every full moon is a chance to remind us to step into our power with courage and intention. The full moon is the most powerful of all lunar phases. It's the time to harvest the fruits of your endeavors and complete the plans that you've made during the new moon. And while we can set intentions for the new moon to occur, to come to fruition during the full moon within a couple weeks. In all um, the way it works uh, more specifically is for a six month period. Today or at this time we're 
working with Capricorn moon, which is full because it's opposite of the sun, which is in Cancer. And those are on an axis, Cancer and Capricorn, that work together, male and female, mother, father. And they, um, so when the, the new moon in Capricorn occurred last winter, we are now six months later to the full moon in Capricorn. And the full moon in Capricorn is going to bring together the completion of what you had planned six months ago with the new moon in Capricorn. So this is a magical time for us each month to develop our spiritual selves and renew our energies. As I was saying before, a day or two before and after the peak of the full moon is a good time for uh, doing the rituals that are great to do during the full moon period. Um, those rituals include making moon water, taking a jar, a glass jar of water, and setting it out into the moonlight overnight, perhaps adding, if you want, wish, a crystal like this quartz, which would be totally safe in the water. You would want to put safe crystals in the water. Um, but if you wanted to do this, and these are the kind, this is the kind of crystal that amplifies energy, the quartz crystals. You might want to put that in your water. And then you can use that moon water the next day. It'll be complete. And so you, you'll take it out. You can use it. You can sip it. You can ingest the, um, the energies. Or you can put it in your bath. You can water your plants with it, your garden. It's special, but it is a special. You can cleanse objects with it. It's your moon, your moon water will have the energy of that of the intentions that you set in it and the full energy of that moon light charged fully by the sun. So this is this is the energy that you'll be imbuing into the water. You can also charge your crystals in stones during this time. Every month I charge all of my crystals in the, um, in the moon, under the full moon, in order to keep them vibrant and energetic. You can take a moon bath. You can soak in the salts or um, maybe even add your moon water to the moon bath. Um, another interesting uh, ritual during this time for manifesting abundance is using your windowsill that captures the light of the moon and you can place money there or a coin, a wallet or your bank card. Put it on this windowsill and uh, let the moon charge that up. Give you more energy. Give your money more energy, more power. This is a Capricorn moon. It's about it's about manifesting and developing and working for, you know, the work that you do, producing something, you know, abundant and tangible. Another thing to remember during this time is that charity is especially blessed at this time. It, you should think about giving someone or or some uh, organization some of your money, time, energy. And whatever you give out during this time will come back to you even stronger than at other times. This is a very good time for charity. It's also a good time to gather with women. The full moon, uh, the moon itself, uh, through her phases, symbolizes the life of the woman. The maiden at the new moon, the full moon is the mother, and then at the waning moon in is the crone and she she is uh, developing into um, um, her wisdom and her uh, she's honing her she's passing her skills I'm, I'm sorry on to the younger ones and she's transitioning into a new phase which will be into the new moon a new life our death and rebirth and so the moon uh, gathering with women at this time is traditional. And so uh, women like to gather uh, to share, to laugh, love, dance, sing, um, create things, art, music. 
it's a beautiful time for that and as I said before we are in the Capricorn moon this is a time to release control and trust the universe Capricorn moon is a very strong Capricorn itself a very strong worth work ethic and energy to, it's a good to be reminded to move through any feelings of hopelessness that you might ha feel at this time and the way to cope with that would be to make plans making a plan is a far better use of your time than hopelessness those born under the Capricorn moon you'll be feeling these energies even more strongly they need to learn uh, to take care of themselves instead of working themselves to exhaustion. Those born under the Capricorn moon are emotionally self-reliant. They feel best when they are in control of a situation or accomplishing tasks. The Capricorns are the workhorses um, of the Zodiac. The full moon in Capricorn, the Buck Moon, you must work harder to finish what you started six months ago. That's what this moon is calling for us to do. This is not the time to settle for no, but to tackle obstacles once and for all. This is also a sign that the end of a tough cycle is approaching. So you've been through a lot, you've been working hard, especially if you've been working on something, on an intention that you set, uh, set for yourself six months ago during the new moon in Capricorn but this full moon cycle is is signaling that this is the end of the tough cycle okay so we are getting to the end of this ask yourself how hard are you willing to work for what you want effort is required um, work issues may come up at this time um, the end of a rough time is forecast at this time. Consider how ambitious you are and whether you are prepared to pull out all the stops to make your professional dreams come true without being ruthless. In love, this can be a call to face reality. Whatever situation that you're asking about, making a plan will help. If your personal life is troubled, prioritize it more okay okay and as I said um, the blue moon this is a blue moon so every two and a half years two full moons occur in the same month or the same sign and that's what we're experiencing here we had a, a Capricorn full moon at the very beginning of cancer season and this full moon in Capricorn will occur at the very end of Capricorn season, entering into Leo season, which is represented by the sun. So this is a, a particularly poignant moment because the, the moon is ruled by Cancer, or Cancer is ruled by the moon, I should say, and Leo is ruled by the sun. And on this day of this particular Capricorn moon, full moon, this particular buck moon, this particular blue moon will also be igniting the energies of both Cancer and Leo at the same time. They'll be merging together basically at this time because we're going to be so far into Cancer season and so close to that to Leo season and that's another exciting point about this particular blue moon because it's it's our soul and our emotions our mother and our father coming together our divine parents coming together and creating this magical time okay it's 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 very exciting to me um, it's a super every blue moon because it's so rare it's so it's like the moon got got a double dose of Capricorn energy okay so we, we already had our dose of Capricorn energy at the last full moon and here we are getting another full dose of Capricorn Sun onto the moon and so it's a supercharged full moon 
Every full moon is a very powerful time, but the blue moon is extremely powerful. It's supercharged. It gives off a much higher energy and frequency than the regular full moon. So don't let this time go to waste as you create some serious magic. Now, as I was saying, generally the full moon is a culmination um, of what was began what began six months ago. But that doesn't mean that you don't have magic right now. We're going to talk about that when we get into our reading, okay? And so you can use this tarot reading and any other uh, signs and messages that you get from the universe as a way to solidify your intentions and help you to create the intentions that work best for you. I would also advise to look at where Capricorn is in your natal chart, what house it's in. Look at um, where Leo and Cancer fall in your natal chart as well. Try to work with those houses to formulate an intention. And because the power, the, the full moon is so powerful, it is possible that during this moment, your intentions that seemed far-fetched or too hard to believe to come true, those could be, this could be this magic moment that you need to, to create the miracle, to, to feel that miracle, to actually witness something rare to take place for you. And so, let me um, explain. Um, this is a positive sign, this, um, this blue moon. is If you've ever felt like you were asking too much of the universe, whatever you were asking about, well, it might only happen once in a blue moon, but it can happen. It is important that you believe in it. If you convince yourself that whatever you're asking about can never happen, then guess what? It won't happen. So just be grateful for this moment that we have and remember to believe in your dreams. Okay? It's, it's not impossible. Okay. So I want to thank you for joining me. We're getting, we're getting ready to do some readings for you. I'm going to have a special reading for you to, um, to help you to understand this full moon energy and how to work with it in order to make your dreams come true. So let's get into it. Thank you. All right, Sagittarius, here we are. I'm getting ready to do your reading for the full moon in Capricorn, this blue moon, this special moon. So we're going to do a full moon spread. Uh, we're going to learn about where we are in the process, how far we've come since the new moon in Capricorn occurred six months ago to now the full moon in Capricorn. And um, I also wanted to add that um, I'm doing a, a little activity, if you will. Uh, that intro that you may have watched, it has a uh, circle here with some crystals on it. There are six different types of crystals there. And so I'm asking that anyone who can identify which six crystals I used and put that in the comments that person or persons will receive from me a free crystal. Um, and so uh, I imagine that there's there it may be that nobody pick, chooses the, the correct uh, six. So whoever gets the closest gets the crystal. Um, if it's multiple people, it's okay. It's multiple people. Um, and so, yeah. And also one hint about that. Those crystals have to do with Cancer and Capricorn sign. Okay, so that being said, I'm going to go ahead with your reading. Spirit, please um, let us uh, work with these cards to learn the, what we can about this full moon period for Sagittarius this time. Thank you very much. All right, here we go. We're doing the six card spread to learn what we should let go of and where we are right now and what we need to be aware of. Okay, so the first card 
indicates what have you created since the new moon back in uh, the winter time in Capricorn. And let's see how far you've come. Oh, wow. Okay, Sagittarius. This is actually, I think this card is associated with Sagittarius. This is the Eight of Wands. And the Eight of Wands is swift movement, action, uh, lots of activity and messages and maybe even love. It's, um, it's fast action and change. Okay. So it looks like you've had quite maybe a hectic first six months of the year. Uh, that's pretty interesting. Um, we're going to clarify all of these cards here in just a little bit after we try to explain. We try to figure out what they are first. The second one is where are you now? says you're in hangman mode, hanged man mode. Okay, so perhaps you are taking a, uh, a, a fresher perspective, getting yourself, um, surrendering yourself to spirit so that you can perhaps look at things from a different point of view, gain enlightenment, um, something like that. Um, so that looks like where you are now. And this card is asking or explaining what are you becoming aware of now? Or what should you be noticing right now? And we have the Hierophant. So we have two major arcanas. And we have um, a Sagittarius themed um, minor arcana here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and clarify what these cards are for. The Hierophant being uh, what you should be coming aware of right now. Um, that could be, um, well, being Sagittarius, um, that traditional type of religious figure could be something that um, has a bearing on your life in some way. Um, it could be that you're needing to be um, you needed some education or it could be that you're you need to teach something to someone else um it could mean that there's an issue with a marriage of some sort um but let's just get the the clarification cards and see what that brings to light for us sagittarius i'm, gonna, I'm not going to take that i'm going to let it come out in a normal way. Let's see what we got. Here we go. All right. Let's see what happens. I think I, I felt like that was just my own fingers doing that. Now there's a flip. There's a flipper outer. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take that one since it did what it did. Okay. Two more for Sagittarius. Come on, Sag. All right. Come on, Spirit, I mean. <laughs> spirit for Sagittarius. Okay. All right. Let's check these out. Okay. The Eight of Wands is clarified by the Ace of Cups. All right. So it looks like all of this momentum and this fast change and this activity and uh, whirlwind of of action, action, action. It has something to do with your Ace of Cups. Um, open your heart and receive the emotions around you. Uh, it's like a new beginning for love, a new beginning for friendship and self-love. Okay, so this looks like uh, definitely a um, positive outcome for the last six months. Okay, and now let's check out where you are now. And the hanged man is clarified by the Ten of Wands. And that's also a Sagittarius-themed card. Okay, so there's always another way to do something. And maybe that's why you're in hanged man mode. Because you have this burden uh, or blockages or frustration something like that you're at the point of completing something but um 
but you're taking the time out and and uh, putting yourself in hanged man mode so that you can deal with it and learn from it. Mm. Yeah, look at it in a different way, which I think is a very healthy way to deal with the with the Ten of Wands. Okay. I mean, you're having to push yourself to get through it. Okay, let's go ahead and check out this. Uh, what are you becoming aware of? The Hierophant is clarified by the sun. Okay. Success lies ahead if you keep to the path. Glory, gain, radiance, strength, and vitality. The Hierophant also is... Uh, it means it indicates commitment and dedication. Um, so the fact that your commitment and dedication is gonna is leading you to the sun, to the um, the the joy and the the goal of where you're going, the completion. It's turning this completion of ten of wands into a completion of the sun, and I think. Being in hangman mode is another way that this this burden that you're going through to get to the end of something, the completion of something, is going to help you to um, see it, see that completion not as um, a drain on you, but rather a big reward. Uh, success lies ahead if you keep to the path, and I think that uh, the hierophant is here to uh, explain that 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 dedication and commitment, uh, the commitment to your growth, to your spiritual growth, to your uh, spiritual learning, those are the kinds of things that's bringing you to the sun. Okay. All right, let's go, go ahead and do the bottom row, and it should even and, uh, enlighten us even further. The bottom row is more about releasing what you should release. This is the full moon. This is time to release something in order to make room for something better to come in. Uh, what what is it? What is it there for me to surrender? What is it time for me to surrender? That's what we're looking at here. And you have the Queen of Pentacles here. And what is it about a Queen of Pentacles that you? What does she tell us about how to what to surrender? She is a supportive, practical, calm person. She works hard for her. She's a, you know, she's an earth sign. She's working hard for her, um, for her pinnacle. She loves her pinnacle. She, she takes care of it. Um, she's a fertile, uh, person of able to create and you know make floor make her home flourish um let's see hard working but relaxed she's also uh can be dependent on others perhaps dependent on the king of pentacles or depend on who whoever that she um, wherever she's she's getting her um, her pinnacles perhaps she's become she's a dependent person um, and that can be unbalanced or undecided okay that's that's something we're going to have to have some more clarification on. But for now, uh, we see that the Queen of Pentacles is in the position of something to be surrendered. Something to be released. Okay, and um, in this position, it's going to explain how to release, how to let go of what is no longer for you. And we have the Six of Pentacles. And so the Six of Pentacles is um, asking us to give and take, to be fair and 
just um, to ask for help if we need it, um, to offer help, to offer help to someone else. Okay, and then we have in this position, what resources are supportive to me as I release? And we have the uh, Two of Swords here. And with the Two of Swords as your resource, I would say that um, it appears that this is a time to um, be in that hanged man mode and go within yourself. Use your intuition to make the decisions, to make fair decisions, um, equal and balanced decisions. Um, there's a warning here in, in this card to uh, look for other perspectives because you could be feeling like that you can either do this or you can do that, one or the other. And that there's no other choices that you're blocked beyond that but the truth is about this card is that there are other uh, there's a third way there are other options besides just two that being said let's go ahead and clarify these and see what what we can find out more about these um let's uh spirit please help us to understand more what Sagittarius needs to know at this time about releasing what to release and how and and why <laughs> okay all right okay so first of all we have with the Queen of Pentacles it's clarified by the magician and you can make your imagination real, it says. So I think what you're needing to release here, it looks like to me, is the dependency on this pinnacle. The dependency on um, the limitations that you that the Queen of Pentacles is feeling because she's limited by what the work that she's putting in. She's limited by what she has in her her bank her store and she's not seeing that she can go beyond that she can go way beyond the queen of pentacles uh way beyond what she has and you know she's looking down so she's not able to see out beyond herself very far <clears throat> with the magician card it explains and it clarifies that um, you have the creative power, you have the magic, and you have the manifestation ability to use your imagination. And don't don't be stuck in this um, uh, comfort zone that the Queen of Pentacles is. I think it's time for you to surrender. This this reading is is telling you. I mean, it's up to you to do what you want to do, but this card is is telling you it's time to surrender your comfort zone you've built up a a mass of um, you know a level of prosperity a level of security and that's great and that's fine but you can have so much more you know you can have this you don't have to work hard like she does for for what you have you can work less hard you can be less burdened you can use the manifestation process you can use these these tools here that the magician has the um the ability that he has to bring what his ideas and his imagination into reality so it doesn't take this hard work it it's gonna you know you have the ability to use your magic to make things easier for yourself and to give yourself the sun which is more of a childlike joyful um and less of a situation where you're just watching your pinnacle guarding it and 
protecting it so much that it's a burden to you. Um, so that's what I see here. Um, the next, oh, this is interesting. The six of pentacles is clarified by the three of pentacles. Um, and the three of pentacles, the message on the card says, reach out for the help you need when you need it. So when you ask this position, this card position is asking how, or is explaining, how can I let go of what is no longer for me? Well, how you do that is to um, give and take fairly and collaborate, reach out for help when you need it, reach out for the help you need it. Uh, spirit is here to help you in this Six of Pentacles energy. Uh, so uh, be like the Hierophant and use your spiritual growth that you're working on, your own personal spiritual growth, not a traditional one. Like the Hierophant is a traditional spiritual person. But for you, Sagittarius, it's not necessarily a, sp a, sp a traditional spirituality. And, you know, get in touch with your, um, your, um, your guide, your higher source, your, your God, your, your self. And decide, you know, help yourself. Ask for help. Ask them for help. They're there to help you. Or you can... Uh, Work with other people. Reach out for the help you need when you need it. Cooperate with others. Um, you know, building something in common with common goals. Then we have the final position of what resources are supportive to me as I release. So while you're having going through this right here, this position of figuring out the way, you know, the way to make things happen for you. Uh, you know, it's you, you're feeling like you've got two choices or a choice between two things. Um, remember that, um, you know, it's, it's a good time to take time out, go within yourself, look inside yourself and find the answer that's right for you. And this clarifier of the Empress says to be happy with the results of your actions. And she is... Also, adding to the information of resources that you have this kind of power, this level of power for creation, creating, creativity and fertility and nature and nurture and pleasure and success and development. You have the level of the Empress, the Divine Mother level of ability to create what you want in your life. You can create this, this abundant lifestyle without this struggle. Okay, I promise you. This is what you're trying to figure out right now, I think. You're trying to um, assess how to, how to make your dreams come true with the Ace of Cups which is telling you to open your heart and receive the emotions around you. That's part of the key here. That's part of the key to allowing this ultimate completion, this completion of ultimate pleasure and love and beauty to, to abound in your life is not, does not have to be a struggle. And that's why you're here. And that's why you need to remember to, um, to, to focus on the, um, the outcome that you want to happen in this situation. Use your magic. Be the magician. Manifest according to what you know that uh, what is above is the same as below. What you pull from heaven in your imagination is what you can bring to life here on the earth. Like just like the queen of pentacles who is on the earth, you know, the queen of pentacles and the magician both have these very floral borders around them. You see 
the magician's covered with these flowers. But the magician gets it in a different way than the Queen of Pentacles gets it. The Queen of Pentacles gets it through diligence and hard work and dependence on others and quite a bit of just uh, perhaps some struggle some struggle in the way because you know she's imagined she's remembering how what it took when she's looking into her pinnacle she's thinking about what it took her to get there and yes she is there she is a beautiful kind loving motherly woman but you can do it this way and be this kind of a motherly woman, a divine motherly woman. This is the step up. This is uh, 3D reality. This is 5D. Okay? So that's, that's the message for you here. Now what I'm going to do next is clarify a little further. Give us a little bit more advice with these spirit animal cards for Sagittarius. I'm going to do three more cards for some bits of advice to help us during this time as much as possible. Okay, there's one pops out, slid out. There's one popped out. All right, let's see what else we have. <laughs> one more at least. Thank you. Ooh, there we go. Thank you so much. All right, so we have three to start with. The first one came, Cougar. <clears throat> leadership you have come into your own power now is the time to take the lead of a situation and be strong using the power of intentions be clear with your purpose and define where you're heading okay you hear that that is your that is your uh, advice strong advice be the magician Think about this intention now. This is a magical time to set an intention. Now, it's a blue moon. It could be a long-term goal. But it's also a very magical, very powerful full moon that can manifest things pretty fast, wickedly fast. So um, take the time. Now is the time to take the lead of a situation and be strong. Imagine what you want. Use your... Uh, clearest intention and find a, a moon ritual for the full moon period that we're in right now and do something magical with that okay that's my suggestion to you Sagittarius the next card we have is Jaguar growth maturity is the ability to embrace change and change cannot happen without death this death does not necessarily mean physical death, but could be the ending of a relationship, a situation, or simply your decision to not continue with the same old habits. And that's, that reminds me of the hanged man because he's not continuing with his same old habits. He's looking at things from a new perspective. He's looking for a way to do things that's different and we are on the precipice of a major change for everyone but being aware of this is going to prepare us to make our best possible intentions and and take advantage of the energy of the change this last card we have from spirit is cardinal adventure you need to live up to your fullest potential okay Explore new directions. There you go. Explore new directions. Take risks in order to grow as an individual. It may change may be uncomfortable, but it is necessary. Okay, Sagittarius, you want adventure, right? You like adventure. You like to expand your horizons. You like to teach others as well. You like to learn and teach and study. Um, this is your card too. You need to live up to your fullest potential. Explore new directions. All right. New perspectives. Think, go inside and look at other options besides this or that. Okay. You have, you have this, you can choose this or you can choose that. What if you don't do either of those? What if you do something totally different? Entirely, entirely different. Okay. 
So just, just th take all this stuff into consideration, Sagittarius. I feel like you're on the verge of making a choice for your life that's going to bring you the ultimate happiness. Okay? The ultimate happiness here. Right? The sun, the empress, the ace of cups. This is what this is what you're going for. This is what you can go for. All right. All right. Now I'm going to, before I finish up, I'm going to uh, work with the career and life oracle cards one more time. I'm choosing to continue doing that just at least this one more time because um, we are with, we're celebrating the um, Capricorn full moon. Okay. And who is more career oriented than the Capricorn? So let's uh, take some advice from these, do this mini reading here and get some cards for, for Sagittarius concerning career. Now I think, I think next, uh, next time, next month, maybe I will be working with something different. I'm thinking maybe love readings as bonus readings, but this right here, um, the career one's what we're doing today. Okay. Here we go. All right, let's take them. One, two, three. All right, Sagittarius. The first thing, drama. Beware of troublemakers in the workplace. The job you want may have too much upheaval to bear. Keep emotions and gossip in check. Okay? I think you, you're too optimistic and too intelligent and too mature and too sophisticated to, in, to feel comfortable dealing with a lot of drama. Okay, let's look at the next one. Real passion. Stop wasting time in dead-end jobs and find your true passion. It's fine to experiment, but don't settle for less than you truly deserve. Okay, true passion. That's what's going to make you happy. That's what's going to fill your cup. That's what's going to give you. That's where this Ace of Cups is coming from. Your true passion. Your, something that you love to do. And don't settle for less. She would never, the Empress, the Divine Mother, will never settle for less than she deserves. Okay. Next card. Perspective. If you change the way you look at things, you could see everything in a brand new light that will help you get to where you want to be. Wow, that's a strong confirmation for this whole reading. Uh, like again, checking these cards here. Changing your perspective. Take time out. You know, get within yourself. Look at things in different ways. Maybe stop, stop moving so much and just look at this. Think about this. Go inside yourself. Decide for yourself your own original ideas, your own perspective. The Hierophant. Be the, the teacher, the leader. Be the leader and, and, and you teach the perspective. You know, you have a different perspective than these guys. They're looking this way. He's looking this way. All right. Okay. So I think that will do it for us today, Sagittarius. I really appreciate you being here today. I ha really enjoyed your reading. For one thing, it was pretty, pretty awesome in my opinion. Um, I would like to ask, uh, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. I made it a little bit easier for you if you're watching uh, the videos on a TV screen. Um, that's the way I like to watch them, I know. Um, so I added a, an end screen to the video so that all you have to do is navigate up and you should be able to click the subscribe button if you're into that. Um, so, you know, it would only take a little bit of effort on your part, but for me, it would make a tremendous uh, boost to, to my channel, to my uh, well-being. And so um, I also would add that your likes and your comments also help me to get better and better and better. Um, I love each and every one of them that I, I receive. I appreciate them wholeheartedly. Um, I do, um, I just want to remind you one more time, you can also make a comment about the crystals that were in the intro if you're so inclined. If you'd like to try for the, for the free crystal from me. 
And so, um, I will just say, um, I love each and every one of you. I love doing these readings. I'm having the time of my life right now. Um, that's all that's going to be all for now. So thanks to everyone. Um, come, come next time. We're going to talk about the lion's gate portal. It's really, really exciting. Eight, 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 not just eight, eight this year. It's eight, eight, eight. And that's really cool. Uh, so I just want to say thanks again, and uh, I really hope you have a beautiful rest of your week, rest of your month, rest of your life, Sagittarius, um, with all, all in good intentions, love and light. Thank you.